My whole life's been a prophecy of fulfillment. To be a World Heavyweight Champion wasn't going to be good enough. I had to have it all. I had to have the glitz and the glamour. I had to have the, the fame, the fortune and everything else that comes with it. <laughs> Alexander Usek's a bad mother <laughs> The only person standing in front of him now is me. And then, then he will have battered his way through Great Britain. And we can't be having that. I went to Germany to fight a Ukrainian in 2015 to become all the belts apart from the WBC which the brother had. And I'm going to do the same again. Let's talk matters at hand. Obviously, Alexander Usyk, May yep. 18th. Excited? I'm excited for sure, yeah. It's, um, it's the type of fight that gets me juices flowing. I'm up, up for this one. You know, I've, I'm training hard, everything's going well, and there's not much more I can do other than keep fit and stay away from injury and don't get any colds in between now and then, mm. and I should be all right. Oh, I knew I'd been cut straight away because I felt something sharp hit me in the face. Yeah. Um, and I just knew, I shouted out, I'm caught, straight away, I knew it. Mm. Um, however, it wasn't really a bad cut, it was only seven stitches, which sounds a lot, but it's not that It much. looked horrific, I saw you put it was open, like that. Yeah, I opened it up horrific. like that yeah. as well, yeah? Yeah. So, it wasn't that much, it was just a flesh wound on a little piece of skin mm. that looks worse than it actually is. I know a lot of people, even today, have made a big thing about this cut. And yeah. Even Klitsch goes It looks advice. good. Looking yeah. at it, it's close. It looks okay. Yeah, it look, yeah. it's fine. Even yeah. Klitsch goes advice to Usyk on beating me is aim for the cut. Yeah. Great advice. <laughs> um, but if the cut opens in the fight, so what? What does that mean? I've done 12 rounds with the cut before. A nasty one. A nasty one. I had white shorts that turned red at the end of the fight. Mm. So, yeah. He's, uh, his shirt, the referee's shirt, was totally red at the end of the fight. I remember Otto Wollin is talking about for people that are wondering. Yeah. Um, who's the first person that gets the call? Is it Spencer? Is it Frank? Is it Turkey? Who gets the call when that happens? Spencer was in the gym watching the sparring, so he saw it straight away, and we just we just called Turkey straight away. But at the time, it was like, oh, I'm gutted now, and I felt down about it. You know what I mean? I didn't mm. get to do the fight, what I trained all the way through Christmas and New Year for, and sacrificed a lot. I think obviously, you don't do the fight, you don't get paid. Yeah. So that was a bit <laughs> time for me as well. However, quickly afterwards, I was thinking, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. And I believe that God has his timing on everything. And yeah. Then wasn't the time, now is the time. How do you like, obviously, look, before that cut happened, as you say, it was a couple of weeks away, so you're peak, you're peak Tyson Fury at that stage. Yeah, yeah. You can't stay peak forever. You've got to come back down again just to be yeah. normal, eat food, whatever you want to do. How, how do you kind of control that, going from peak to normal, back to peak again so quick? It's just what I've always done, you know. I've never, ever let anything get, get above me. I just yeah. do the fight, come home, and act normal, you know. Try and watch what I was eating, which I have done perfectly for since the cut. Everything for me is about um, diet. Yeah. You can't out-train a bad diet, never. Mm. So you can train three times a day and still gain weight if you eat the wrong foods. Yeah. So it's all about watching what I'm eating. And I'm being very careful this year because obviously I've got a lot of big fights coming up and I want to keep myself in trim now. I'm getting a bit long in the tooth for the job. What do you think is the best Tyson Fury that you've ever seen? Probably the one against Klitschko when I was 27. Yeah. Um, but youth has evaded me now. I don't have that anymore. Yeah. I'm not 16 or 22 or whatever. I can't, I can't bounce back from injuries and get run over by a car or <laughs> doesn't doesn't work so much at this age, you know. And I've got a lot of mileage on my clock with the way I've lived my life. Mm. I haven't lived a strict athlete life like someone like Vladimir Klitschko would do. Mm. I've lived, I've loved, and I've lost plenty of stones in my time. Put yeah. it on, put it off. Although I train, train every day anyway. But I'll train here and go straight to that boozer over there and sink seven, eight pints after a session. Sometimes. How do you do that and still be as good as you were? How just, is that possible? It's just natural gifted talent. Mm. You can't learn what I do, it's not teachable. You've either got it or you haven't. Mm. I've often seen myself have a load of drinks the night before, and I mean a lot, and then go and spar 10, 15 rounds the next day. So it's a natural thing, a natural engine, natural talent, natural whatever, natural idiot, whatever mm. you want to say. But the one, one thing is, is if I can control that diet, then everything's going to be all right. Because I know now I can't, I can never ever again get that weight off like I did before. Yeah. Like back in 2017 to 2000, late, late 18 when I came back, I lost over 10 stone in weight. Like if I go up to that again, I'm dead. There's no coming back. I'm dead. Yeah. Literally, physically, dead. I, I won't, won't make it. Yeah. So I can never get back there again. And I can't keep getting two and three stone off, even though I've done it my whole life. Even for a Klitschko fight, I lost six stone, 10 pound in eight weeks and then fought Klitschko. So imagine how easy it would have been if I didn't have to lose just under seven stone.
That's the perfect weight, isn't it? That fury that fought Klitschko, the way you looked. I remember that photo yeah. where you looked incredible. Yeah, I was skinny. I was, I was only young, though. Yeah, I, true. I just turned 27 years old. It's easy to get weight on and off and, and look a bit better. When your youth's gone, like mine has, you have to live on your experiences that you've had from your youth. And everything that you've, you've, that's happened to you in your life, you've got to call on all of it mm. and sort of summon it up and use it against whoever you're fighting. You know when you, you were starting this journey out in boxing, yeah. was the dream to become British champion? Did you have lofty dreams of becoming a world champion? For sure, from the very first day. Yeah. There was nothing else, like to be a British champion or anything for me, it was like aiming for the stars and hitting a lamppost. Mm. It wasn't not going to be good enough. Like My ambition from lacing a pair of gloves up at a little kid was to be heavyweight champion of the world. There's many, many, many videos. I've just fulfilled prophecies, that's all I've ever done. Yeah. Fulfilled prophecies from what I've said from being a kid. I've got videos on my phone from being 17 years old. They're saying I'm going to be world heavyweight champion. 100% going to be world heavyweight champion. I had about me before four amateur fights at the time. I've actually, my whole life's been a prophecy of fulfillments. Before my mother and father got married, my great uncle, Big Just Burton, he said to me, Uncle Peter, if your brother and my niece get married, there's going to be a world heavyweight champion bred out of them two. And here I am, the son of them two people. Mm. Prophecy fulfilled. When I came into this world, 1988, August 1988, I died three times and my dad said he's going to grow up to be nearly seven feet tall and weigh 20 stone and he's going to be heavyweight champion of the world and I'm going to name him Tyson. And everyone laughed. Mm. Here I am, world heavyweight champion. And to be a world heavyweight champion wasn't going to be good enough either because there's many champions out there one that don't make tons of money and two that nobody knows of. I had to have it all. I had to have the glitz and the glamour. I had to have the, the fame, the fortune and everything else that comes with it. That was going to be it or nothing or it was going to be a failure for me. Even Paris, along the way, like when I first met Paris, she said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm going to be heavyweight champion of the world. She was like, ha. Huh. <laughs> she thought it was a game, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I used to play, play boxing. Yeah. You go and play in boxing, it's not a real job. So she thought it would sort of fizzle out as I got older but it didn't. Always been very confident in winning the World Championship and even confident in getting these massive paydays. I remember talking to Paris in 2008, before I was professional, that I want to make like 100 million in one fight. And she was like, that don't exist. No one's ever made that. I was like, I'm going to do it. And here we are today doing it. Here we are today. How good is Alexander Usyk? Alexander Usyk's a bad mother Yeah. Yeah, he's a bad man. Yeah. He's beat all the cruiserweights yeah. and he's beat majority of the heavyweights too. Only person standing in front of him now is me. You. And then, then he will have batted his way through Great Britain. And we can't be having that. <laughs> we can't. We cannot be having that. I went to Germany to fight a Ukrainian mm. in 2015 to become all the belts, apart from the WBC, which the brother had, or else I would have got that as well. And I'm going to do the same again. Against nowhere near the puncher of Vlad Klitschko, nowhere near the size, and someone who was on top for 11 years. Nowhere near the achievement either. I was listening to you downstairs. I've always known you as a boxing historian, but every time you talk, you kind of hear you talk about sort of fighters in the 70s and 80s, and then it kind of reaffirms just how much knowledge you have on the sport. The fact that you could come or become on May 18th the undisputed heavyweight champion first in the four belt era, does that give you anything extra considering what you've already done in your career? I don't think it gives me anything extra. Um, as in, this fight was just as important as the Chisora fight to win. Really? Or the Chisora fight was just as important as Tom Schwartz. Yeah. Every fight's very important. To me, it is anyway. Every fight's just as important as the next one. Um, does it give me anything more? All as in... Parts, the Ring magazine. All of them things I've had, on, I've had them for years. Yeah. Like, I've had all these things for a long time. It's like having a Ferrari in the garage since 2016 that I've done about 4,000 miles and I'm not used. It's like, or every Ferrari that I've had before and after. Mm. Do I really get excited about Ferrari anymore when I've had 20 of them? Do you know what I mean? Not really. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, I get excited for the fight, not for the accolades or the belts. Belts and accolades aside, if it was just me and Usyk going one-on-one -on -one and mono, el mono el mono against each other for whoever the best man is in the world wins, that's exciting to me. I'm giving all these belts as a special dedicated present to Turkey El Sheikh. 
Every one of them. You'll be happily, I think, to get all of them. Final couple of points. Do you ever think of losing? Does it losing? Ever, does it ever cross your mind? Not really. Okay. But it can happen to anybody. It can yeah. happen to the best of us. I just feel like the important thing for the individual is knowing they did everything in their power to have victory. I'm not saying if I woulda, shoulda, coulda. That's the haunting part. It's like AJ now, yeah? He's fought Usek twice and lost twice, yeah? So in his mind, he knows he didn't cut corners in training. He knows he didn't cut corners in the strength gym or the fitness gym or sparring or anything. Because mm. he did everything. He doesn't come across to me as a type of person who would not do everything right, like in the gym. I know he trains hard. I know he, I know he dedicates his life. I know he eats right all year round. Mm. So he knows in his own mind, he can't say, well, I didn't do it because I didn't have enough training or I didn't have enough sparring or whatever. So there's no shame in that. All right, I have a laugh calling him a sausage and all that, but the man is an aw awesome guy. Like he changed his stars from a council estate to a multimillionaire, 100 million in his bank. You know, that takes a lot of admiring. Yeah. That's inspirational. Same as myself. We're both got all and we're both multimillionaires. So although I give these all the boxers, which I'm entitled to because it's in my sport, bits of jibes and sticks and call them names. Nobody else has the right to do that because they're not even boxers themselves. So he knows in his own mind, he can't say, well, I didn't have the right preparation or whatever. He knows he did the best he can and it wasn't good enough. So if I can go in there and do exactly the same, and even if I get knocked out in 10 seconds, I know me, deep in my heart, that I did everything I could to win. And that would be enough. But if I went in there and lost, knowing I didn't do any training, knowing I didn't do that would eat me up forever and ever and ever, amen, till the day I die. Because mm. I'd think, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? But as long as I know I've given everything I could, then I don't care. So Any message say. to Alexander Usyk? I don't really have anything to say, you know. Um, nothing. I've, I think I've said everything. I've got to be, well, I know I'm the best talker in the game. Nobody can out-talk me, so. On, on any given day, he will have a barrage of onslaught against him. Mm. And on other days, he might get a nice bit of a gesture. But the truth of the matter is, and I'll say it to you guys, and I'll say it in the changing rooms, I ask God to give both men their best performances on the night and may the best man win and get out the ring in one piece safely and go home to his family, whoever I'm fighting. That's the prayer I say to God the Almighty before the fight. Well said, Tyson. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much.